Hello and welcome to our exciting overview of the latest improvements in the upcoming alpha version of Arvastar 4. Let's dive right in and discover what's new. The binding and skinning panel previously had an outdated and inconsistent design, especially when working with just the armature selected. To make matters worse, attempting to unbind resulted in a frustrating Python error. Object has no attribute all. But good news, this issue has been fully resolved and the panel now works exactly as you'd expect. And here's how you can proceed. First, you can perform a manual unbind as usual. Simply open the unbind section and adjust the options to suit your needs. Make sure that at least the unbind mesh option is enabled. This is essential for the unbinding process. Then fine tune the other settings as needed. When you're ready, click the unbind button to unbind all the selected meshes. But let's be honest, I know you're probably as impatient as I am, right? So I've added a quick unbind option, which in most cases is exactly what you'll want. Just click the snowflake icon in the top right corner of the unbind section. Arvastar will instantly select the most suitable options for unbinding. This handy feature saves time by automating the process so you don't have to manually configure anything. Oh, and here's a bonus. This works even if you've selected specific meshes for unbinding. Arvastar really is a clever beast, isn't it? Um, there was another issue reported regarding armatures in edit mode. If you've noticed slowdowns in the UI while editing your armature in edit mode with the rig configuration panel open, you're definitely not alone. This issue also caused the Blender console to flood with warnings about unavailable bone collections. The good news? This has been completely fixed. Performance is now back to normal, and those pesky slowdowns are a thing of the past. Finally, I've added a fresh new feature. Bone tinting in edit mode. We've tackled a subtle yet common source of confusion, the identical appearance of bones in edit mode and pose mode. Here's the thing. In Blender 3, bones in edit mode were always bright orange. And while you could change that color in the user interface settings, the change applied to all bones universally. Now in Blender 4, we've taken it up a notch. You can set up individual colors for each bone and even assign different colors for edit mode and pose mode. Initially, we tried keeping the bone colors identical across both modes, but that approach didn't work out as well as we'd hoped. So instead of reverting to Blender 3's limitations, we've introduced a fully customizable feature that not only resolves this issue, but also lets you personalize your workflow in some pretty creative ways. Let me introduce the tinted edit bones. Um, for demonstration, let's switch to edit mode so you can see exactly what I mean. When I enter edit mode, you'll notice that the bones are tinted by default in pure white, which blends with their original colors to create soft pastel tones. This subtle effect provides a clear visual clue, making it easier to distinguish between edit mode and pose mode. But that's just the default. Did you know you can actually customize this tinting? Here's how. First, open the rig config panel and navigate to the edit bone tint section. In this section, you'll find the tinting factor, which you can adjust. A value of zero means no tint at all, so the bone retains its original color, while a value of one applies full tint, where the bones adopt the full tinting color. The default factor is set to 0.5. Next to the tinting factor, there's a color widget that lets you define the tinting color. By default, this is set to pure white, which is why you get those pastel tones in edit mode with the default settings. Once you've adjusted the settings to your liking, simply click the recolor edit bones button to apply the changes. But wait, there's more. You can customize the tints for normal, unselected bones, selected bones and the active bone individually. To do this, click the unlink icon on the right hand side. This will reveal three color widgets, one for unselected bones called normal bones in Blender speak for reasons unknown, one for selected bones and one for the active bone. Keep in mind the tinting behavior can vary depending on the bone display mode. Uh, let's start with the octahedral mode and experiment a little. Set the unselected bones to white set the selected bones to yellow, set the active bone to red, adjust the tinting factor to 0.8. And once you've made these adjustments, 
click Recolor Edit Bones to apply the changes. Now you can see that all bones are tinted in an almost white shade with a subtle tone of their original colour. Selected bones stand out with a yellow outline, while the active bone is highlighted with a red outline. When you switch the bone display type to stick, the effect becomes even more noticeable. Bones appear soft and pastel-like, selected bones glow almost yellow, and the active bone takes on a vibrant red hue. This feature allows you to customise the visuals to suit your specific workflow. Experiment with different settings and see what works best for you. And don't forget, we're always open to your feedback in the Arva Star 4 Discord channel. If you think we should add presets here, just let us know with a solid reasoning and it might make its way into a future update. Well, that's it for today. Uh, the new alpha version 3.6.97 is ready and waiting in your daily build folder. Give it a try, share your thoughts and enjoy exploring the new features. Thanks for watching and have a fantastic day.